What's up everyone, so nice to see you and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to tear down the Philips Hue dimmer switch version 2. Here I have the version 1 that I've been using for some time and they have replaced it with this newer version that I'm going to now unbox and tear it down. I have used this already but I have not took this apart and uh, the reason I'm doing this because uh, I want to see what's inside for the idea of modifi modifying this uh, uh, either totally bypassing the original switches that I think are inside or then trying to make a new front panel for this that could be 3D printed to make the buttons bigger for example. So what you have in the box, you have uh, some documents, quick start guides, and then you have the actual dimmer switch and the mounting plate, which is a two-part uh, system. Oops, be careful with the knife there. It is, uh, it has a magnetic mount for the dimmer switch, and uh, the backing plate is is the one that you actually mount with the, in, to the wall. And uh, I'm now taking this uh, front plate and back plate uh, apart. So these are injection molded uh, parts made out of uh, polycarbonate. And as there's the magnet also you can see. And uh, this is the technical side of the injection mold. And the front side is really nice and smooth. And this is the one that you mount in the wall. You have uh, some screws with these relatively standard mounting patterns and uh, then you also have a double-sided tape so you can use both or one of them and uh, this this is the switch uh, there's no visible places to uh, screws or stuff that can be seen there's the four buttons so the power button then you have the dimmer button so for brighter uh, and uh, dimmer and then at the bottom you have the hue button that you can program to change scenes and this is the battery door the unit comes with freshly loaded cells and it actually seems to be a Duracell cell it's CR2032 size, so pretty normal, not, nothing special there. And uh, I'm now taking the battery out to see if there's a screw behind the battery where we could start. As mentioned, I, I have not done this, this is the first time, so join me in this journey. There's nothing there, no, no visible screws, and uh, I am not feeling any hidden screws also at the back panel. So this is either totally welded, plastic welded, uh, ultrasonic welded, or it's glued, or then what I most likely think it is, it's, it's uh, assembled with this uh, snap-on fit so you only have these positive locking plastic shapes that snap together pretty nicely uh, it's the fast fast thing to do this in the final assembly uh, you don't need any extra extra tools or you don't need to wait for the glue to harden or anything and uh, it's easy so I'm I'm guessing that uh, if I start to pry here and don't cut my fingers with this knife, I can find some uh, clips that can be released and uh, hopefully get this thing apart. And actually I can already see that there's some clips, but it's not immediately giving any positive release sounds or feel. But I'll try to do this that in a way that I can actually use this switch again. And it's usually when you do this for the first times, uh, 
many times I end up breaking a clip or two if this actually is uh, assembled with clips and no tape also that's also one possibility but I will be leaving some scuff marks and uh, those sort of uh, visual things there but as long as everything can be assembled back I'm pretty happy I don't I don't mind few scuffs or scratches at this point it's almost inevitable and there we can actually see the there is some clips in the white buttons but the buttons are not just coming out easily it seems that there's also something else or oh, the shape is uh, shape is such that uh, when you pry the edge outwards the actually the buttons are the clips are inwards so you would need to access them from the other direction and uh, I can already see that there's uh, some black plastic component also inside that feels to be moving with the buttons a bit at this point and I'm getting some nice clicks now and then which means that I managed to release few of those clips but uh, they are not then when I move to the next one they clip back so what I'm going to try to do now is use the tactic of uh, two screwdrivers you see I switched to this flat blade heads to not cut myself and the idea here is that when I release one clip the other other sc screwdriver keeps the clip unattached and uh, then I can move forward with this next one and it seems to be paying off almost immediately and at this point I'm a bit afraid that I'm going to break some plastic but still it feels relatively safe the corner is open so some some light already the end of the tunnel I can now see the black plastic part even more and I can see that it's moving with the button I'm pretty confident and even, even more confident that this is the way to go with the tear down so I'll keep prying the long edge and there we go again one clip released and I actually managed to release the power button so and now the now the whole assembly is moving I can see that I'm actually prying to the black plastic part edge so I can use a bit more force it's not the circuit board that I'm prying on and uh, it's coming apart I think and I think also in one piece almost there I can now see the innards there's this black plastic subframe thingy that's uh, that has the buttons and then I think the black frame clips to the back plate and yeah there we go it's almost free almost there and yes we have it and the, the inners yeah there's the circuit board there's a few screws uh, that uh, mount the circuit board to the front section so I, I think to the black frame and uh, now we can see the buttons they are just uh, with plastic clips to the black part so if you are assembling this at the factory it's uh, just you put the circuit board screws and the buttons and uh, then you just clip it back to the back frame and you also can now see that there's actually the magnets at the back frame which are used to when you Mount, it, mount this to the wall plate 
So let's take the screws out and check, finish the tear down. Everything is still relatively in relatively good shape actually. I'm happy about that. Now the PCB comes out. Oh, and there's uh, the silicone or thermoplastic urethane part in between the switches and the front panels, so making it the feel nice. The switches are small micro switches, quite tight actually. And uh, there we have the buttons, so they are the clips are actually. Uh, also work, working double time as uh, they are restricting the movement. So the silicone part is uh, uh, and the switches are pushing them to the front and these are limiting the travel of, of the buttons and when you push them in you get the feel out of the button and then you have the silicone there and in combination they are creating the tactile feel and now it's easy to take the buttons of of the black su subframe they are also injection molded parts and this is the last one so now i have everything everything here and uh, after this if i would want to go further i would need to start tearing these components apart so using a soldering iron or saw or something else. So this is the end of this non-destructive teardown. Try to finish the smooth the edges a bit because I actually made some scuffs there but let's then check how heavy the spring is that Philips you have selected for this switch. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty grams needed. Two hundred and seventy. Two hundred and sixty. Two fifty, two fifty, around two hundred and fifty, two hundred and sixty grams. There is going to be some difference from unit to unit. Let's take a closer look on the PCB. I'm by no means an expert, more mechanical engineer, but have been dabbling around with uh, electrical stuff a bit. And uh, this looks to be a multi layered uh, PCB with uh, only surface mount components. So, made for automatic production, of course. And, uh, you can see that the components are really small. I don't know the form factors here, but I know that these are really on the small side. And I guess the brains, everything is here. So this is the processor. And uh, I'm assuming this also includes the RF capabilities for the Zigbee communication. Uh, I'm also going to assume that this is highly value engineered, meaning that uh, they are producing this in really big quantities. So, uh, the less components you have, the less you need to pay for those. So, that's uh, then more profit for the company. And on this side, we have the LED here 
it's I know that it's a multicolored one so might be well at least it's uh, two colors you can see that there's two independent modules inside the plastic so you can then mix those and have uh, of course multiple colors and here's the switch tactile switches uh, measured to be around 260 to 70 grams nice tactile feel and um, these are the connections for the battery uh, negative uh, for the ground for this PCB and this is the positive for the battery here you have uh, a lot of test pins so for the software for the processor you can program it and uh, you can do some measurements you can measure something and uh, here's the reset switch for the whole, whole system and uh, this is interesting I don't uh, know it, should, it looks to be that this is maybe something from the development time so if this would be a development unit you could solder in a connector here and you could then power and program this via that connector i assume that uh, that's for that and they have of course left it out for this production model and I don't know what's that for, Mark. Maybe this could be for aligning the PCB. Maybe. As I said, I'm no expert, but no something. And uh, this is either either the crystal or then this has even more of the RF capabilities. To me, my guesstimation is that this is just a crystal, so providing the frequency for this uh, uh, all-in-one unit to work. MG22C2024HIC01JLJ2160. 2116, oh, maybe. Manufacturing date, so 16th week of 2021. Uh, yeah, some sort of a check mark from whoever assembled this. Revision 2.0 of the PCB. And uh, Yeah, this is how a value engineered Zigbee product looks like. And uh, doesn't cost much to produce this PCB. I would guess the bomb is very cheap. <laughs>